Welcome to the archives of IT. Scientists, technologists and medics talk here about how they have used computing data and communications in medicine. When Danish footballer Christian Eriksen collapsed at the Euro 2020s with a cardiac arrest, he received life-saving treatment on the pitch with an automatic external defibrillator. He has now resumed his football career playing in the English Premier League and joined Manchester United in 2022. You now see automatic external defibrillators in many public locations and features include patient assessment and the ability to direct an unskilled user to use the machine. You can buy one for around £1,000 and it will weigh only about 2 kilograms fortunately small enough to fit in a football trainer's kit bag. When the heart stops in one of a variety of medical conditions, an external defibrillator can be used to restart it with an electric shock. The sooner it's done, the better the chances of recovery. Frank Pantridge, known as the father of emergency medicine, had the idea of treating heart attack victims at the scene in the mid-1960s, but then a defibrillator weighed 70 kilograms and needed a lorry to take it to the patient. Much of the work now going on at Nybeck had its inspiration nearly 40 years ago in the work of one of Northern Ireland's most famous and successful innovators, Professor Frank Pantridge. In the early days when, when Frank was setting up cardiology you know, at the Royal Victoria Hospital, he began to realise that most of his patients were dying outside hospital or in the home or somewhere else. 60% of the deaths were occurring within the first hour after the onset of chest pain. Professor Pantridge's solution was simple but groundbreaking. Instead of transporting the patient to the treatment, he would bring the treatment to the patient, saving time and, of course, lives. And so, in the mid-60s, the first cardiac ambulance in the world took to the streets of Belfast, and the first move had been made towards bringing the point of care from hospital to patient. Well, speed is the all-important um, thing in this kind of case, because the longer we leave someone outside hospital with a coronary thrombosis, uh, the more likely they are to develop within the early hours of the onset of symptoms. But there was a snag. The machines the team needed, particularly the defibrillator that can shock the heart back into action, were simply too big for the job. Already the need to miniaturise was clear, but it was easier said than done. This was a team that really was ahead of its time. The materials they needed simply didn't exist. And that was the inspiration behind the founding of Nybeck. Much of the work on development and miniaturisation of the automatic external defibrillator was done by Professor James Anderson, who formed the Northern Ireland Bioengineering Centre, or NIBEC, at the University of Ulster in 1990. It's now known as the Nanotechnology and Integrated Bioengineering Centre and continues to research new treatments for cardiac illness. Professor James McLaughlin, OBE, who features in our item on personalised medicine, was involved early in his career and is now Director of NIBEC. Each of these short videos describes a medical breakthrough made possible by information technology in the words of those who achieved it. For more detail and extended interviews, visit our website archivesit.org.uk We are grateful to the support of the British Society for the History of Science for supporting this project.